Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video, first, we're gonna talk about William Bonek, who just updated us with the most muscular shot. So, based on this photo and all the other photo updates that he posted so far, yes, William Bonek is the man to beat. So, he is the defending champion, he won it last year. Dexter was second and Big Remy was third, William won it, 2019 he lost it to Brandon Curry, but the year before, 2018, he won it as well, so he won two Arnold Classics and he is the defending champion and he looks awesome, he looks amazing right now, he's pretty much in shape already, yep, I mean, he looks hard, he looks dry, he looks shredded, I don't know how much drier and, and leaner can he really get from this point, I guess he will just maintain this kind of body fat and just get bigger, fuller, harder, I don't know what the game plan is, but he looks great right here. He is asking us a question, which most muscular, which crab pose do we prefer, this is the first one and this is the second one, so I'm not really sure, because the first one he looks wider, and the problem with William Bonac is the width of the shoulders, that's one of his biggest weaknesses, that's his biggest weakness for sure, and overall frame, like that's part of his frame, uh, the structure, the skeletal structure, and so if he spreads his arms a little bit more, he looks wider, but if he closes the crab pose, he looks denser, he looks harder, he looks even more muscular, but a little bit more narrow, so which one is better, I'm not sure, probably the one with the arms uh, spread apart a little bit. Whichever one he decides to do, it's not really gonna make a big difference, he's most likely gonna end up walking away with a victory. Who can stop him? Well, that's a topic for a separate video, for sure. Ian Valier, Nick Walker, Rolly Winkler, I don't know, a lot of great guys are competing at this show, and they're all gonna be challenging William, I think, quite well, but are any of them really on his level? It's gonna be, it's gonna be hard beating William, so... If I was a betting man, I would still bet on him, I think the chances are in his favor, but we will see, it's gonna be an exciting show for sure. Alright, next one is not really a story, I mean, it's not a story at all, it is just a comparison between 212 and the Open. So in case you guys thought these guys are similar, it's not really the case. In some cases, some 212 guys they are really, really massive and they have to lose a bunch of muscle, a lot of fullness to cut down, to manage to get to 212. For example, uh, Derek Lansford, Flex Lewis, Heidi Chupan and some others. But here is Ahmed Verdani right there in the middle, who just won Texas Pro and I love his physique, I thought he was really freaking impressive. He has a lot of good body parts, he has a really nice flow to his physique and I thought he was massive before I saw him stand next to Hassan Mustafa and uh, okay, Hassan is out angling everybody, yes, you can see that, he definitely stepped <laughs> quite a bit forward, like he's not big enough, he had to do that, to, to just dwarf Ahmed, it was not nice, it was horrible, <laughs> it was really bad that he did this to, to, to Ahmed, but uh, also you can see him standing next to Mohamed Shaban, who is not really that much in front, but he also took an angle. I guess these open guys are just mean, and they know the, the out-angling game, they know, they're all about the size. So, I mean, also Mohamed Shaban, he was competing in 212 before, and then he climbed up so much, and now he's in two, he's 240, 250, he used to be 212 like two years ago. Hassan, with his height, he can also do 212, but this guy is one of the freak, he's one of the most massive guys in, in IBB right now, so of course he cannot do 212, he's probably like 280 on the stage, I don't know, but really short. But even though these guys are out-angling the 212 guy, you can still see the difference, and he, I mean, he looks like a, like a boy standing next to men, especially Hassan, Hassan is absolutely dwarfing his legs, I mean, one Ahmed's leg looks like two legs of Hassan. Again, it is the angle, but it's still, you can see the thickness in the upper body, I mean, the neck, the traps, the shoulders, the overall mass, I mean, the, the space between the legs and overall, um, you can see that his structure, just, just the sheer mass of Hassan is much, much different than that of uh, Ahmed Verdani. If Ahmed ever had any aspirations of switching to the open, his dreams were killed after this photo was taken because he knows he cannot hang with these big guys not yet at least maybe someday but i don't think he's able to get to this to this level of muscularity of size they absolutely killed him right here and they basically destroyed this division 
pretty much uh, by taking this photo. Yes, they outangled him. That was mean of them to do. And Ahmed shouldn't have led them. He shouldn't have just stepped backwards like this. You cannot do that, man. You're not Big Rami. Big Rami doesn't care about angling. He's gonna let you. But if you are a smaller guy and this big guy stand next to you, don't even take a photo unless they agree to stand either behind you or next to you. If they're trying to outangle you and they're already twice as massive as you are, don't let them do that, man. <laughs> don't let them do you like this. Anyways, this is a fine comparison between 212 and the Open. Tell me what you guys think. Alright, next is not not a fun topic, not nothing to, to, to be laughing about. Uh, it's another death in bodybuilding. By the way, I'm sorry guys for the emotional roller coaster here, but this guy just passed away. May he rest in peace. He's a he was a professional bodybuilder. As you can see, official RX Muscle posted this. His name was uh, Phil Hernan. He won the NPC USA in 1995, and uh, I don't know. As far as I know, he never competed in pro ranks, but he was a pro. And he was, as you can see, humongous. And he had some really good genetics. He probably could have been a top pro for whatever reason. He didn't do that. This is the most recent video of him from about two years ago. So as you can see, even at, even at old age, he was still probably training really hard because he still had a lot of mass and very lean uh, tissue. So I, I'm not saying he was using gear or something like that uh, when he was old and that's why he passed away. I'm not saying anything like that. He could have been on TRT here for, for all we know. Uh, but it's just another death in bodybuilding. I mean, how many already? He wasn't old. He was like in his 50s, something like that. He was a young man and he passed away. So it's probably not even the best idea to talk about this stuff. I mean, this is really putting a bad name, bad rap on bodybuilding. But it still needs to be talked about. And I mean, these older guys, they have done what they have done. Nothing can be changed now. If gear abuse is the reason why they have these consequences today, nothing can be changed. You cannot go back in time. Maybe that has nothing to do with it. I mean, 50-year-old people are dying every day. It doesn't have to do with, with, with gear or whatever. So it, it could be totally unrelated. I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. It's not really the topic. Another death in bodybuilding. This time it's Phil Hernan. May he rest in peace. Frank McGrath with a physique update. This is him right now. So basically what you can see right here is that he is still holding on to a lot of muscle, a lot of tissue. But you can see that his stomach starts to look like uh, an old man's stomach. His, his skin starts to uh, look like it's drier and kind of melted. It's something that happens to older men when they're in their like 50s usually. But I guess sometimes it happens sooner. I think he had some surgeries done on his stomach as well. I'm not sure. But overall he, he, he is massive. He still has a lot of mass. When Flex Lewis prepared for his last Mr. Olympia, 2018 was it? He was training with him. And it seemed like maybe he was gonna make a comeback. There was some talk, but apparently that's not gonna happen. I mean, it didn't happen so far and I don't think it's gonna happen again. Even if it does, looking like this, I think, uh, I think Frank McGrath is done for. I don't think he can be a competitive bodybuilder anymore. If he wants to compete again, he can do it for fun. But to be on a Mr. Olympia stage again, that's not gonna happen. Alright, the next part, which I left for the end, is, if you ask me, the most interesting part of this video. It's Chris Bumstead and Ian Valier being scared of Robert Timms, saying that he is the top threat to Chris's title and an actual threat. He says a lot of very interesting things on this topic. I'm gonna play you the video first and then I'm gonna tell you what I think about it. That Robert Timms guy. Uh, Mr. Mr. Classic Physique, the guy who won the that was the He was impressive as a motherfucker. I'm like, the first thing I thought of was, I gotta ask Ian about, yeah. about Chris. Because every Man, time, look, because I, every, I, wait a minute, every time I ask you about Chris on this show, you say, ah, there's nobody there, he's hands down above everybody, blah, 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 and I'm always with you. But yeah. now I'm like, wait a minute. This hey, guy's anyone who was there who saw me see this guy will know that when I saw this guy, I was like, we got our hands full with this. <laughs> like, yeah. This is like golden era bodybuilding in terms of the answer to the question, could he beat Chris? Could he? 
Maybe. Will he? I don't think so. I think Chris is going to be improved. All right, so I did not expect Ian to say anything like this. So I wasn't there. I didn't see this guy in person. But you can see right here, it's a high quality video. It's a really high quality video. And I personally am not a big fan of this physique. I don't think he's really that good. I don't think he's an actual threat to Chris Bumstead. There is another very interesting thing that Ian said. I'm going to show that to you after this, after I say a couple of things about Robert Timms. So, do I think his physique is bodybuilding golden era physique? No, I don't think so. I look at his back. It's way too massive and too weird looking. I mean, the waistline, <laughs> the waist is probably too small. That it just looks weird. The lats are just uh, separated completely. The legs are a little bit too small for my taste. I prefer more massive legs. And if we put all that aside, I know a lot of you guys are big fans of this guy and I know he brought good level of conditioning, but even if you consider everything, like he has big arms, he has good symmetry, he has uh, great conditioning, whatever, uh, it's still, I mean, classic, that's not really quantifiable. It's not really something that you can just point out to, it's something you get the impression of when you look at it. When you see it, you know it is classic. And me personally, it's subjective, I know, but I don't find this physique classic. I believe that his conditioning was so crazy, that the details were so impressive, that I just couldn't ignore it and they had to give him the victory against Logan. But again, do I think he's a threat to Chris Bumstead? I say no chance. I say no way. And I don't think he's better than Brian, than Terence Ruffin. As long as they are in shape, I think they can beat him. I don't know. We have to still see them compared. But am I a fan of this guy, of his physique? I'm not. And this, however, is classic physique 101. <laughs> this is as classic as it can get, basically. And I mean, you can pick him apart, but yes, you can obviously see that Chris has much bigger legs, uh, waist is just as small, he has also really good back, he probably has a bigger, broader, just overall massive, more massive chest, Chris does, and uh, put that all aside, man. Conditioning and everything. Just the classic lines, the sheer classicness. I know that's not a word, but... Chris just has it. It's, again, you can't quantify it, but you can see it. You can feel it. When you see a physique like this, it just screams classic. I don't think Robert Timms is the biggest threat to Chris Bumstead. And I don't know why Ian is saying this, because Ian, he never, so far, he never said anything and he didn't really mean it. He said Logan Franklin is not a real threat. He's gonna be like 7th tonight and he guessed that right. Whenever he said something, he really meant it. He's not saying stuff just for the sake of saying it. He is not trying to simply create uh, some kind of hype up for the classic physique, a uh, fake rivalry or something. No, I think when he says something, he really means it. Fuad also said that this guy can challenge Chris. I love these guys and I respect their opinions, but I have to strongly disagree with this one. I don't think this guy is classic or top threat to Chris's title. In terms of the people out there right now, in my mind, is Robert the biggest contender? 100%. Based off that showing, I, I absolutely agree that he is better than Brian. I think he's better than anybody else out there right now. I didn't really know who that guy was until we were tanning, and I was like, this guy is Dennis. Fun. Dennis James was training him like yeah. two or three years ago. Better than everybody else? Better than Brian? I mean, come on. I just don't get it. I don't see it. I mean, Ian Valier, he's the coach of the best classic physique competitor today, Chris Bumstead. So I guess if he says something, and he was there in person, he saw Robert Teams live. If he said that, then it probably means a lot. Fuad noticed it as well on a live stream. Guy Cisternino saw him in person as well, and he was blown away. So all these guys are praising him. A lot of people on Instagram, on YouTube, everybody is blown away with this guy. I, I don't know, man. I just don't really see it. I don't see it. I don't know about you guys. And I guess if these guys... I really respect these guys on the podcast. I love them. I watch them every day. And I do respect their opinion. I know they are sort of experts on the matter. But I don't know. I don't see it. I have to stay opinionated. And this is my honest opinion. I know a lot of you guys will hate me for this. Because this guy has a lot of fans. But I'm just speaking the truth. What I feel. What I see. And in my eyes... 
I don't think Robert Timms is uh, very classic. He's kind of classic, but not really. If Chris Bumstead is 100%, let's say Chris is 90% classic, I would say Brion Ainsley is maybe like 60-70%. Terence Ruffin is something like uh, 75 maybe 80 I'd say Logan Franklin is very close to Chris as far as classicness, but he is not there with conditioning yet. And there are some other very, very classic guys, but Robert Teams, as far as classic, I would say he's like 30-40%. That's just what I think. Uh, there are other classic with competitors who are, of course, way less classic than him. He is kind of classic, but to say that he's a top threat to Chris Bumstead, I don't see it. I don't think so. I really doubt that. We'll see what's going to happen at the Mr. Olympia. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be wrong. I don't think he's going to be second or first. I just don't see it, but anything is possible. Though I would be really surprised to even see Robert Timms bid this. This is Brian Ainsley right now. And he is seven and a half weeks out of Mr. Olympia, and he is already pretty much in shape. He's pretty much shredded. Uh, is he super, super classic? No. But is he more classic than Robert Timms? I think he is a lot more classic. I do think his physique flows better, and I am a bigger fan of, of, of Brion's physique than I am of Robert Tim's way, way more. And that's just my personal opinion, guys. I don't know about you. What do you think? But you tell me your honest opinion as well. No hard feelings. And here you can see Brion Ainsley. He looks the same as he looks every year, and he's, uh, he's an older guy, actually. He's in his 40s. So we cannot really expect uh, major changes. This is classic, this is not bodybuilding, just thinner skin and more muscle maturity isn't necessarily gonna help him. As the guys get older, they get less classic, you know, the limbs are starting to uh, fall off, they're starting, not really <laughs> fall off, but they're starting to melt away, they are starting to look smaller and the mid part of the body, the torso, uh, it's starting to look thicker and bigger, this is what happens with age. I'm not saying that uh, Brion is already suffering of those consequences, I think he's still holding on to a lot of uh, to a lot of muscle and he still looks very young. His physique, his shapes are still very fresh. By the way, his face also he has a baby face. He looks like he's freaking 25. A lot of people are surprised when they hear that he's in his 40s. But uh, as far as physique, I think he will be uh, he will place higher than Robert Timms. I think uh, Terence Ruffin will do that as well. And maybe Robert Timms will crack the top six to win or to be second. I don't see that happening. Brion Ainsley. He has a legitimate chance to be second again, the, uh, like he was the year before last. Last year he was actually third, and Terence Ruffin edged him out. I think he has a chance to be second again, but uh, to to be uh, lower than Robert Timms, I would be surprised. It can happen, but honestly, I don't see it. Whatever you guys think, though, tell me in the comment section down below. Make sure to leave the comment and tell me how do you feel about this. I'm curious, are there people who feel the same way as I do? Or are all of you fans of Robert Tim's physique? <laughs> I'm just curious. And thank you guys so much for watching all these videos. If you want to see more bodybuilding content like this, subscribe to this channel, guys. Show me some support. Anyways, thank you so much. Again, all the best and bye-bye.